still went to ethics and um, yeah I finished the relationship between me and him and um, some other time there was another there was another boy and um, he came from Venezuela he was working in the freebins office you know what freebins office is? Free, uh, well, you know the freebins right? yeah that's the ship, yeah, right? exactly. That's right. the ship where you can do your OT8. Mm -hmm. So um, he was working for the office, for the Freeman's office. The Freeman's office has the responsibility to get uh, people on the ship, to get revitalized on Scientology, to get them, you know, move up the bridge or do OT8 or something like that. So um, first of all, we started to have a relationship like brother and sister, right? And um, and this went like more more and more to a real relationship <laughs> and um, I mean we were really in love to each other and um, was, we, it e was it easy having a relationship in Scientology? No, because when you're in the Sea Org you're not allowed to have sex or you're not allowed to um, ha do heavy petting. I wanted to have find out you know I wanted to find out how it is, how is sex you know I didn't know anything. Did you have any education? In no. It? No. Nothing. There was no one you could turn to. No. So um, we did more than we were allowed to, and uh, we swore to each other. We said we are not going to say anything like this. Two weeks later, two weeks later, it came up. He got an interview with his, with the. Um, not with Sears Yellow. Um. I can't remember the I can't remember the post. It's like here is the Sears Yellow, and one per, one post behind um, below it. Okay. So that guy he was um, he was asking him questions like, um, well, what kind of relationship do you have with Vivian? You know, and he broke he broke the war, and he told him everything. He went to ethics, and he did the EPF again. And me, I went to ethics. I got asked again. I was um, I was shut in a room for about three days to write OWs, to write everything about everything down about it. And um, there was another situation come up with another guy. So, so with me, you, yeah. With another guy, and um, you know, if you do liability, you know liability, right? Okay, that's one of the conditions you do. So I wrote down a knowledge report about somebody else who was doing, um, who went out to eat with me, who was married, and um, who um, slapped with me, and who was pushing me to do that, which I, wanted, which I didn't want to do. And um, this report went to the COCMO, and I got, um, I had to speak with her about it. I spoke her. I spoke with her, with her about it. I swore her this is the truth. I wrote down. She didn't believe me. She was asking him about it. He was saying this is not true. We never slept with each other. I never told her to do that, etc. So then I got on like the call sex from the CMO, right? She's like, um, I don't really know what she actually does. The only thing I know is that. I went to the, on the emitter and she was asking me questions like, is that the truth? And you know, I had to tell her the whole situation again. And the needle was floating. So if the needle is floating, I was telling the truth. So he left the post, he had went to go, to, he went to ethics and um, I was still in ethics. And um, the RTC office was there and I was still writing OWs and um, I had to go to the emitter so they can check if I was finished with the OWs. I did this about five times and they told me you're not finished with the OWs, you can go back to write your OWs. I wrote about four, four weeks, I wrote OWs. And then I started writing OWs which I've never done, you know, to write another OW so that I wrote this OW which is not true, I never did this OW, you know, because I didn't know any OWs anymore. So then I went to the then I went on the emitter and the needle was still not floating, you know. And then I said, okay, well listen, guys, fuck off. I'm not going to continue my W writing. 
I wrote my W's, and if you not believe that I wrote, that I wanted, that I'm finished, I'm not going to do it anymore. Right? I'm going to sit somewhere and, and I'm going to wait till I can go. So then they told me, you know, there's an FO. The FO is called um, R2D. No, 2D rules. And um, in this uh, in this FO is stated what happens to somebody who goes R2D. And usually, if you if you would have been on a ship and you went R2D, you know. They're gonna um, take you and throw you overboard. So they would. They wanted me to go on the RPF, and I knew that I, I had um, somebody who somebody's friend of my parents was on the RPF for six years. So I said, I am not gonna go on the RPF because if I go on the RPF, I'm gonna take maybe eight years. <laughs> So then I said, well, I'm going to leave the Sea Org. So then they were trying to tell me, well, if you leave the Sea Org, you still have OWs and blah, blah, blah. And you know, um, out in, you know that out in, no, out in is like, um, you know, the Scientologists, they say you have a Satan, you are a Satan and you have a body. And if you have problems that your Satan comes into your body and leaves the body, if you have problems with it, you get like um, you get headache pain. You, your whole body is painful. Um, uh, you're feeling sick and uh, like things like that. And the CS was saying you are out. F you're out. Um, out in. So usually, what happens if somebody is out in is the person gets a rundown, an out in rundown. And until this rundown is not finished, the person is not allowed to study. It's not allowed to get any kind of word word clearing. The person's not allowed to get anything else on the bridge or sack jacks or things like that. What happens? I got a sack jack and I was still out in. So I got the sack jack and the sack jack in the sack jack came up that um, uh, my needle was floating all the time when I wrote my W's and I went there and you know I took the cans. And um, although it came out like you know in this four months I was 20 you know I was like for four months I got uh, 24 hours watched for four months four months yeah somebody was watching you 24 hours a day yeah security how did they do that well wherever I wanted to go somebody has to come with me if I wanted to go to the toilet somebody has to come with me and stand in front of the toilet and check if I was still in the toilet so if I wanted to go eat, I was eating with the RPF people. If, um, if I wanted to talk to my parents, somebody who speaks German has to, li has to listen to the phone call. So then it came up that I was telling my parents that I'm getting a fitness board and I'm going to root out of the Sea Org. So I was told, well, there's a policy called leaving a lease. And in this policy, you're not allowed to tell anybody when you're leaving somewhere. So, and um, and in the sex check it came up, and they were trying to tell me that this is my penalty, uh, that I should get penalty for it, that I'm a suppressive person, because in this policy says if somebody tells that the person's gonna go, um, the person gets a suppressive. It's like the person gets to a suppressive person. So well, this came up and this came up, and when I came out of this session. And I had to go to the examiner. You know, you have to take the cans again, and it's going to check if the session is okay. Um, I was red tagged, and red tag means that the session was not um, successful. There is something happened in session which was not right, and the person has like uh, the reactive mind is going completely crazy, or um, it could be like the, that the person, uh, like after a few hours, the person gets sick, or the person whatever happens to the person. This happened. So I went in session again within 24 hours because if, um, if you don't get in session within 24 hours, all stats of the HEC is zero. So I, got away, I went back in session and um, they were asking me, they gave me some list, whatever it was, I can't remember. And they were, ask, they were asking me some questions if there is something happened in session which I was not um, agreed with. I said, yes. The point of that, I was um, 
I was not violate. I was violating the policy leaving a lease. I said, "Listen, I'm not violating this policy. I just told my parents that I'm going to come back to Germany, and this is not violating this policy because I didn't tell anybody of Saint Hill Manor if that I'm leaving the Sea Org. I didn't tell it. Why would that be such a big crime if you had told somebody? Well, this would mean that I have OWs." And this would mean that I would have criminal acts, and um, this would mean that I would maybe black PR the Sea Org and black PR black PR Scientology. So would would it, they get in danger? In essence, would your telling somebody in the Sea Org that you were leaving would that and maybe I'll, make them doubt? Yeah, exactly. And that's the reason why I was not allowed to tell. Well, in these four months I was studying, I was getting work clearing, which I wasn't allowed to. I was writing OWs. I was doing mess work. Isn't this frustrating when you want to leave and yeah. for four months they're, they're keeping you there? I had the feeling that um, they, just want to, they just want to destroy myself. That I'm like... Um, that when I leave, I have no chance to survive. My, I mean, when I went back to Germany, I, my weight was 42 kilograms. Normally, if I would go to the doctor, the doctor would be, he would just um, send me to the clinic. You know clinic? Hospital? Right. Kind of hospital. Right. Yeah. I'm not and familiar they with kilograms. So that means you painfully thin? Yeah. And yet no one, no one there at the org suggested you go to a doctor or, no. or that you should be concerned. No. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> Were you concerned about your health at that point? Yeah. Could you express that to anyone? Well, I mean, to somebody who was who was there. Yeah. No. It's because it's your fault. I mean, I was like feeling for the past four months that... I was, that I was going step for step to that point that I'm going to die. You were wasting away emotionally and yeah. physically. And it was like in this four months I was not allowed to, to talk to my parents. People from the outside who don't know Scientology, mm -hmm. they ask, "Why didn't you just leave? Why didn't you?" I was I was trying to leave. My aunt was coming over there. She's English and she's uh, she's living in Eng she's living in the UK, and uh, she wa she was visiting me, and she was waiting for she was waiting for an hour to see me till they found me, and she wanted me to come with her to go to drink a coffee. And at this point, when I wanted to go to the in this car, if I want, you know, in this point when I wanted to jump in the car, the security guys came and they just took me away. They they physically grabbed you and did not let you go. No. Where did they take you? On my arms. But, but they took on you their back. shoulders, yeah. Right. They then they took you back and locked you in a room. They took me to security, and then I went to. Um, and then I went to uh, HCO, and they started to tell me that I have OWs. And I said, I have no OWs, I can go on the emitter, I have no problems with it. I went on the emitter and had a, fleeting, a fleeting, floating needle. 